Hi guys, I had a website subscriber ask about, asked me to make a video. He was having a hard time getting in between some fittings that he was putting in some aluminum parts because there's only like 10 or 11 millimeters worth of gap here. Just wondering how to get the torch in there and the way that I would do it, the best way to walk it around. So first off, my ideal way to do it would be from the back side, just, you know, weld around here on, the, that'd be a lot easier. If you can contact the whoever designed this thing, you know, and see if they'd allow that, that'd be the best way. And then maybe just, you know, put a few reinforcements here on the outside and not go the whole way around. I'm wrestling with that, but we'll give this a go. In this video, I'm going to be welding with this machine, the Prime Weld 325X. I'll put a link in the description below for this machine. If you put it in here and you tack it to hold it in place, it's going to want to lift and go this way. So you could put two tacks on it, but then when you run around, you're going to have to weld over your tack. And that's not always pretty. Ideally, you want to be able to go around without any tacks. So I'm going to, I'm going to tack weld the backside first. Get two in there, push down, get it sitting nice and flat and square. Get the shim the right height and wedge it under there. So another thing I would want to know before welding this on is where the focal point is on this piece. You know, what part it's going on and where people, where you're going to be looking at it from so you can hide the tack welds. But I don't know that so I'm just going to put them wherever I, I'm just going to guess and put them where I want. So I'll weld the rest like I don't have access to the inside attacker from the inside. So by putting that tack right there, that gives you a good place to tie into when you come around because that's the hardest spot to get to. So I like to get rid of that first usually. I like to give it a few taps too to make sure it's not going to jiggle around while I'm welding, make sure it's stable. Got that one little pinhole I need to fill in. Push down on it while it's cooling so it doesn't torque over on you. Let's see if I can get you a better angle here. And then when you 
come up on the hole, it's thinner and less material, so you got to start wrapping off your amperage and be mindful of that so your, your bead doesn't overheat and turn gray and get too wide. Okay, I think you get the idea, so on and so forth. And I'm standing up doing most of this using the TIG button, no foot pedal. Not my finest work, but stuff like this takes a lot of practice to get the muscle memory built up if it's not like, you know, like a common straight weld that you do all the time. But hopefully that helps you. Thanks for watching. Okay, time for a quick ad for my website. You can tune out if you don't care about this stuff. If you're wanting to get better at aluminum welding and fabrication, I got a website, 6061.com. It's a one-time $45 subscription, and then it's just lifetime viewing after that. There's no ongoing fees or any of that BS. And I teach you exactly how I do what I do, how I feed the rod, what type of rod I use. High quality arc shots that show you exactly what I'm seeing right through my welding hood as if you were doing it right there with me. And then the variable ampers TIG button I sell on there that replaces a foot pedal. How I shape my tungsten, why I shape it the way I shape it. Tungsten type, gas flow settings, basic welder settings, advanced welder settings, how to cut metal, how to clean it. It's a very detailed website, and if anything isn't answered on the website, feel, feel free to email me. Thanks.